Hello and welcome to this video on what is the difference between a spit and a bar. Now this is relevant for the GCSC NXLA exam board and looking at the specific topic of coastal landscapes. Okay, so before we start, I want us to think back to those five main physical processes. So just take 30 seconds, note down and pause this video thinking about what those five main physical processes are. Go. Okay, you should have paused it. You should have got those five physical processes down. We should have mass movement, the movement of sediment downhill due to gravity. Number two, weathering, that wearing away of rock in one place. Number three, erosion, the wearing away of rock by water, transportation, moving sediment from one place to another, and finding deposition, okay? That dropping of sediment by water. Okay, so they're the five key processes, physical processes. And today we're looking at two coastal landforms, spit and a bar. And specifically, we need to be thinking about transportation and deposition. Okay, so on your screen, you have a photo of a spit and a photo of a bar. Now, the first spit, if I take you to Google Earth, is actually in a place in South Devon in the UK called Dawlish Warren. Now this is going to show you an actual image of that spit, okay? And if we zoom in, okay, we can actually see where this spit has formed. It actually tells us that this is the Dawlish Warren spit, okay? And we have the River X river mouth there. Okay, so that's our spit. And that image of a bar is in a place called Slapton Lee, also in South Devon. So South Devon, notorious for its famous coastal landforms. In a place called Slapton Lee, we're going to be able to actually see, you can already see on the image it's showing me up here, that that bar has formed across two points along this coastline. You can see it nice and clearly there. Okay, so they're the two coastal landforms we're going to have a look at today, spit and a bar, and trying to understand the difference between them. Okay, some quick definitions and recap of those definitions before we move on. So, deposition, what's the best definition? Sediment being dropped by water, the wearing away of rock by moving water. Have an answer in your head. In three, two, one, everyone should have A. Okay. Now, the next definition that's important to know in order to, to understand the terminology we're using today. What is the definition for prevailing wind? A, the distance the wind travels over the sea. B, the direction the wind usually comes from. Have an answer in your head in three, two, and one. Everyone should have B. Now, the final one, really important recap here. What is the definition for longshore drift? The process of sediment moving along the beach, the process of sediment moving away from the beach okay now that was a along the beach okay so longshore drift you should become familiar with this diagram now and all of these six key terms i want you to take two minutes copy out that diagram and label it with those following terms you can pause the video here so you can do that in the next two minutes off you go Okay, you should have paused that video and had to go at that activity now. Just a little recap. Okay, so we've got the beach, we've got the sea, we've got the prevailing wind. Okay, so and that determines the way the waves are going to move onto the beach. Now, those waves bringing sediment onto the beach. Okay, we call that the swash, and the actual waves taking the sediment off of the beach at the same at the angle of 90 degrees we call that the backwash so we've got the swash coming onto the beach at the same angle as the prevailing wind the backwash coming off the beach at 90 degrees remember that's due to gravity okay normally where the beach is steepest now this forms that zigzag pattern okay of a where sediment which sediment will follow as it's moving along the beach. And that process of that sediment moving along the beach is longshore drift, okay? And then that's the direction that the longshore drift is going to be 
moving in. Okay, so we can see how one piece of sediment is transported from this part of the beach all the way to this side of the beach, okay? But that's actually looking over quite a straight bit of coastline. But in the UK, this is not the case. So what will happen if the coast changes direction? Now we can see on this image, we've got Penzance in Cornwall. We can see how the coast is changing direction, okay? And we should already know why this, why this happens quite a lot is because we have different types of rock, different types of geology, and the strength of that rock is different. So how quickly it's eroded will also vary depending on the geology in an area, okay? And you can also see on this right-hand side, we've got two headlands and then two bays situated in between and on this side of the headland. Okay, so we can quite clearly see that the UK coastline is not straight all the way around. It changes and alters quite a lot. Okay, so what's going to happen when that longshore drift continues where either the coast has changed direction or whether where the coast meets something like a river mouth. Okay, so we already know over time that the prevailing wind causes swash to move sediment onto the beach and backwash to move that sediment off the beach at 90 degrees to the shoreline, okay? Now this happens all the way along the coast and we call this process longshore drift. Now I've circled where the coast changes direction. Now this is due to the fact that it meets a river mouth. Now over time, this sediment will start to be deposited in the mouth of the river, okay? And this will cause sediment to build up along the river mouth. Now we call this coastal landform that is beginning to appear a spit, okay? Now, as more sediment is deposited, and if the prevailing wind changes direction, so you've just seen me there, I've changed direction of the prevailing wind, it's now coming from a different direction. This will actually cause the direction of longshore drift to change, which means the spit may start to curve in a different direction, okay, as this curvature shape to the spit. And over time, that spit will grow even more. Now, you can see that there's an area behind the spit that is actually sheltered from the sea. So it's sheltered from waves and it's sheltered from wind. And this is going to cause the sediment in the river to deposit behind the spit. Okay, so over time, what we get is a, something called a salt marsh forming, where all this deposit of sediment has built up. Okay, now over time, as that salt marsh grows, okay, vegetation and plants will be able to grow. As I mentioned, the spit is actually sheltering this salt marsh from those waves and the wind, which also stabilizes the spit. Okay, so here's a diagram showing the whole process. So the prevailing wind, which determines the direction of the longshore drift. Longshore drift continues to happen in this direction, even when the coastline changes direction, this spit grows over time. And then this area is protected from waves and wind, which allows plants, etc., to grow on this. And as more sediment is deposited behind the spit. Okay, so a little bit of a test for you. Can you remember what these key features of a spit are? A, B, C, and D. I want you to take a minute to try and have a go. Remember them, I've given you these initials. Pause the video, have a go. Three, two, and one. Okay, you should have had a go answering all those now. So let's have a look. The key features of spit. A, prevailing wind. B, direction of the longshore drift. C, is the river mouth. And D is that salt marsh, which has built up after lots of sediment has been deposited there where the river has slowed down. And then over time, plants and vegetation has been able to grow because it's sheltered from the waves and the wind. Okay, so that is a spit. Okay, so 
Now we've got to look at a bar. So we can already know why a spit forms. So that's labeled here. Now what's gonna happen if that spit extends across to the other side of this bay, okay? So you've got the headlands, two headlands, you've got the bay, headland where the stronger rock is, bay where that slightly weaker and easily eroded what rock is. So if that spit continues to form between two headlands, across this bay, long shore, shore drift is going to continue to transport sediment across the front of the bay, okay? Until it reaches the other headland, okay? As it reaches the other side of the bay, the coastal landform that we get and is the created is called a bar, okay? And we call the area of water behind the bar a salt water lagoon. Over time, this will will fill with sediment and that will allow vegetation to grow. Okay, so we can see again, this diagram explains the whole process showing the direction of longshore drift, which is transporting sediment across the bay. As it reaches the other headland, a bar is created, okay? And the area of water behind that is called a lagoon. Okay, same as before, A to E, except I haven't given you any initials to help you out meaning I think you can do this on your own now. So have a go, A to E, take a minute, pause the video. Okay, so A, you should have had the bay. So that's the bay area behind the bar. The headlands, the two headlands, B, where the bar actually joins up the prevailing wind, which determines the angle of the swash. Okay, the direction of longshore drift as that sediment is transported along the front of the bay and then a lagoon forms behind the bar. Okay, so thinking about some of those similarities and differences, I want you to copy this table out onto a piece of paper. Take a minute to do that, pause the video and then come back. Okay, you should have had that table drawn out. Now what I want you to do is take two minutes to write down some similarities in that left-hand column, and then I want you to try and think about what the differences are between a spit and a bar. So you can write down everything that must happen for a spit to occur, and then how it's different for a bar. So take two minutes to have a go at that on your own. Okay, you should have paused the video and had a go at that own, on your own. I'm gonna give you a little bit of help now. There are a few questions on there, some hints for the similarities, some hints for the differences. So I want you to use those questions to add anything to your table that you don't already have. Take another two minutes to do that. Pause the video. Okay, so you should have used those questions. I'm gonna go through some of the answers. Make sure that you're filling out these answers in green pen um, and adding anything that you don't already have. Okay, so spits and bars are both depositional coastal landforms. They form when sediment is dropped by water. Spits and bars form because sediment is transported along the coast due to long, short drifts. There are two similarities. A spit forms where the coast changes direction or meets a river mouth. Over time, a salt marsh will form behind a spit. The spit may curve if the prevailing wind changes direction. Alternatively, a bar forms when longshore drift continues across a bay. A bar will form across that bay and normally between two headlands. Now, the area of water behind that bar is called a saltwater lagoon. Now, looking at the physical appearance of both, a spit is just an extension of the coastline at one place. A bar is normally an extension of that spit and it joins two headlands together. Okay, so... If you're doing GCSE, then I'm gonna go through an exam question for you. If you're at Key Stage 3, you can stop that video there if you want, or you can try out this GCSE exam question with us. Okay, before I start this exam question, what I want us to do is to actually think about what a spit and a bar look like in reality. So I've got A to D there, take 30 seconds, a, B, C, or D, pause the video. Okay, is it a bar or a spit? So A is a spit, okay? You can see actually how the prevailing wind probably changed direction and caused the spit to 
take a slightly different angle to the coastline. Okay, sorry. And B, that's a bar, okay? So you can see actually how the sediment has, has been deposited between those two headlands. A uh, saltwater lagoon has formed uh, behind the bar and actual vegetation has started to grow there. Number C, that's also a bar. You can see where the um, sediment joins up between two headlands and also the salt water lagoon behind it. Now that's quite interesting because you can see actually where there's probably softer rock in the grooves where the um, coastline has been eroded away much more easily rather than that this part of the bay which protrudes out which probably means that that rock is a bit harder and less easier to erode. Now D, now that's a spit. Now this is really interesting because the spit actually curves slightly and then curves inwards and then back outwards. Now this suggests to me that the prevailing wind has changed direction multiple times. So you can see that the prevailing wind has caused the longshore drift to transport sediment this way and then it must have changed to make the spit actually curve around this way and then it must change significantly to cause the spit to actually start moving back inland and then it would have the prevailing wind would have changed again to cause that sediment to trans to, to be transported in a similar direction as to here okay and then extend beyond the coastline here okay so that exam question all right so looking at this picture spit or a bar Okay, so everyone should realize now that that is a spit. Okay, so our exam question suggests one physical process that has led to the formation of the landform shown in figure one. We've already identified that landform. Okay, we can also see that a salt marsh has started to form behind the spit. Now, when it's asking us to suggest, we also need to explain how that landform was created. Okay, so. To get those two marks, we need to identify our evidence. And you might want to use a sentence starter such as I can see in figure one that. You also need to explain your evidence. So this means that or this has been caused by. All right. So I want you to take just two minutes because that's how long you'd have in the exam to try and do this independently. Remember, you're using this image here. You might want to copy out the exam question to help you. Use those sentence starters, pause the video, have a go independently. Okay, so you should have had a go at that now. I'm going to show you two model answers. I want you to improve your work and I want you to tick to see if you think you've got those marks. Okay, so I can see in figure one that a spit has formed. So that's where my first mark is for identifying. This means that sediment has been transported along the beach and extends beyond where the coast changes direction due to a process called longshore drift. Alternatively, you could have said, I can see in figure one that a salt marsh has formed behind the spit. This means that sediment has been dropped and continued to build up behind the spit due to the process of deposition. Remember that question is asking us for one physical process. And in each answer, I've underlined the physical process that I'm talking about. So in the first one, transportation due to longshore drift. And the second one, this buildup of sediment due to deposition. Okay, so mark your answers, self-mark, give yourself a mark out of two. All right, so that's the end of this video. You can also get your teachers to check those answers if you're not sure. Uh, hopefully that's covered the difference between what a spit and a bar is.